Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where we create photo realistic assets together. I hope you're having an amazing day so far. Before we start, I want to let you know that if you're interested in a more in-depth texturing course and some advanced hand painting techniques in Mari, please check out my Gumroad. My Buddha Mask Mari course explains more in detail how you can combine stencil and procedural masks to customize your paint to achieve a photorealistic look. If that's something you are interested in, the link is down below. Let's dive into part two of our hard surface texturing in Mari course. I apologize for my voice by the way, I woke up early today and I woke up with my voice like this. Hopefully it will get a little bit better. In last week's video, we talked about concept and reference, analyzing materials, and collecting and creating textures. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will link it down below as well. So for today's video, we're going to get into arranging all the basic materials inside of Mari. In this stage, we will create material masks for every material on your asset. We will choose a basic but good tileable texture to represent every material. If you are not following a concept, at this stage, we need to make sure that we are happy with all the material arrangements and how it's breaking up the entire asset. First thing I always do before I start a new asset, especially a hard surface asset, is to bake my AO and my curvature. Um, at this point, I don't know how I will use them, um, either for smart masks in Mari or smart masks in Substance Painter, it doesn't matter. I know I will use them, so first thing I do is to bake them. This asset doesn't really have a high version geo, so I'm just baking the basic version inside a Substance Painter, and I leave all the settings at default. This bake looks pretty good. I think that will work for my project. So the next thing I will do is to export my AO and my curvature. I might do some of the mask, uh, smart masking inside of Mari, so I need to import those into Mari. Here I'm creating two fill layers, the bottom one black and the top one white, and assign my AO as a bitmap mask onto the white layer to view them in my viewport. This is a good way to visualize my AO and my curvature map. Once I'm happy with everything, I will start the export. So we go to File, Export Texture, because I'm already displaying my AO in the diffuse, so that's the map I will export. And choose your file size. And normally I use V-Ray UDIM to have the correct naming convention, and just press Export. After that, I will do the exact same process for my curvature map. Um, I will assign curvature as the bitmap mask onto my white mask. First, I will look at it for a little bit to make sure everything is okay and everything is what I was expecting. And if I'm happy with it, I will do the same exporting process. Now inside of Mari, I will create a new channel called Ambient Occlusion. This is the channel I will import my mask into. Because this is a black and white map, make sure you, for the color space, you choose raw and scalar. I won't talk too much about nodes in this because it would just make the tutorial way too long and way too many things to explain. But I do have another video of an introduction to Mari nodes and I will link that one as well. Before I actually import my ambient occlusion, I will create a backdrop for these two maps just to keep everything organized. I will also name the backdrop Bakes. Inside of this backdrop, it's going to be my important utility maps that I will be using over and over throughout this project. Now I right click on the paint node and navigate myself to the map I exported and import them. Quickly checking my import inside of Mari and uh, making sure that it's what I was expecting. So now I'm going to do the exact same process with the curvature map. The curvature map is what I was expecting as well, and uh, we can keep going with the project. After that, we can get into laying down our first materials. Looking at my main inspirations again, I'm trying to understand what are the main materials that I will have to lay out. And besides the main material, what else is on top? What kind of grunge and dirt I will have to make? After last week's uh, steps, I have collected quite a bit of tileable textures for every material that I think I will need for this asset. 
Let's jump into Mari and start to build our node graph. First, I will start with building a new backdrop. This one is going to be for diffuse, and this is the one we're going to spend most of our time building our materials. I will construct my material into two main parts. One is the bare metal part, and another one is the painted metal part. I created two merge nodes for each part. Actually, the first merge node is not really necessary because the bare metal basically covers the entire thing, and I have another merge node for the painted area. You will see me fixing that later, but for right now, we're going to build our first material, which is the iron material. I created a new merge node, and I named it iron. I also created three new shelves um, to help organize my texture. One is for metal, one is for grunge, and one is for paint. Uh, I find that will make searching for my tileables much easier. Now we can build our first tileable texture, which is going to be the iron material. I will go to my diffuse channel because that's the channel I'm going to be looking at now. I have dragged my iron texture into the tileable node. Now I'm just adjusting the scaling and making sure the scale makes sense, and also uh, we don't see seams. In general, this looks pretty good to me. Remember, at this stage, we're just trying to lay down all the materials. They don't have to be perfect. We can always come back and fix them. So after that, I'm adding another merge node and adding my next material, which is gonna be the copper material. I'm just dragging my prepared copper texture into my copper tile node, and uh, again, just adjusting the scale, making sure everything looks good and the scale makes sense. Once I'm happy with this copper texture, the next step is to create the material masks for the area that the copper is gonna cover. So for that, I create a new backdrop. Gonna put all my main material masks together for organization. Then I create a new paint node. This is gonna be the copper mask. View the paint node on its own by pressing one. You can see that it's a completely black mask. And uh, we're going to select all the parts that is supposed to be covered by copper and fill it with white. Now we will link this mask into a radio transmitter node and link it back into our diffuse map. To learn to use a radio transmitter node, check out the introduction to node tutorial. I will create a radio node on this side and link it into the mask link for the copper material and link that one into the transmitter we just created. Now we can see our copper material on top of the iron material. Keep going with our next material, which is going to be a steel metal material. The process is exactly the same. First, I create a tile node and I drag my steel tileable texture into it and adjust it a little bit to make sure everything works well. And then the same, I'm going to make another mask for the steel material. I will link that one into another radio transmitter node and link it back into my diffuse map. I will paint the area of the mask white for where the steel is. I didn't assign a lot of pieces to the steel material, so I didn't use its own entire UDIM to save some space. Just gonna quickly use a solid brush to cover up that area. After that's done, I link it to a new radio transmitter and link a new radio node into the steel mask area. And now we have all the different metal material laid out. As you can see, there's a quite a bit of iron material, and uh, a lot of those areas are going to be covered up with paint. Adding a new merge node, now we're going to lay out our first paint material. The color of this paint is not exactly the paint I want, but I think I'm just going to adjust it with the HSV node. I'm going to adjust this into a more darker and blue paint. That's the color I'm going for. After I'm happy with the paint, we're gonna do the mask for the paint material as well. I'm sorry this process seemed very repetitive, but I just prefer to make sure all my masks are set up and all my material is set up before I do any more detailed work. Sometimes within each material, things can get pretty complex and you might have to add a lot more different to kind of break up and material on top. It's always good to know that everything is restricted within that material, with the material mask. This is a very large area of paint and uh, it's too uniform. I want to add another shade of paint on top to break up the shape a little bit more. I'm adding another merge node and another tile node connected to the merge node. 
gonna put in another paint layer that is more white. Going to create another paint mask for just this area. Please be aware that the paint mask we created before is for the entire paint area. And this paint mask is just for a different color. Make sure you name everything so that you never get confused as the project gets more complex. I didn't really organize my white paint into one you dim, which you probably should do. So at this point, I'm just uh, picking out the area that is supposed to be white and uh, finding the UV and uh, paint it over. Once the whole mask is painted, I decided to swap out the original white texture into the same texture I'm using for the blue. Just make it a little bit more dull and uh, desaturated. I'm just checking around to make sure that I'm happy with where all the white paint is. Now we have all the basic material laid out on this object. I'm starting to add a different HSV node into different uh, tileable node just to adjust the value a little bit, making sure everything can work together. For me, the steel seems a little bit too bright and I want the metal to be a little bit more on the darker side. Even at this very basic level, I wanna make sure that all the color is working together cohesively and uh, somewhat pretty. That is the whole process of how you building all the basic material for your asset and building material masks for them. I know this is not a super fun process, but it's a very necessary process for organization and making sure the baseline works well before you add the more exciting things on top. For the next part of the tutorial, we're going to get into actual painting and how to combine procedural and hand painting process to create interesting material masks. I hope you got something from this and if you enjoy this type of content, please like the video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.